everybody it has been it's been a long time so just out front i'm clint this is intelligence mod uh and we're gonna do uh clint's game shelf or clint's rpg self it's literally been so long that i i can't remember literally what my own show is called which is insane uh <laughs> so i got mostly it's because i got an actual brand new physical book and and i i've been holding back doing the actual episode on this even though the the pdfs have been out for a while but i haven't had the physical copy yet and i've got it right here shiny and brand new i think i've only cracked it open maybe once or twice and that is the soulbound rpg it is the warhammer age of sigmar role-playing game by cubicle 7 and oh my it is such it's such a pretty book i was i was so excited i i actually um pre-ordered this so i actually have the uh, gm screen and i even have a map of the main part of the area you kind of play in which is called the great parch which is oh it's an awesome map it is it's gorgeous looking so one might be asking what is soulbound others might be asking what is age of sigmar so up front, Age of Sigmar is the fantasy miniature tabletop game put out by Games Workshop. Uh, you might not know that game, but you might know Warhammer 40k, which is all the space and stuff like that. So uh, for really bare bottom, most simplistic way to put it, it's it's fantasy 40k, simplest way. This is the role playing game that is the straightly based off of it so if you play age of sigmar it's the same stuff same type of uh world and all that things so basically what it is is you the player character actually play what is called a soul bound and what a soul bound is is basically it is someone that is entrusted with the power of the gods of the realms to go out and solve problems because at this point um the the realms it's either the eight realms or the nine realms. I, I mix the number up with Norse mythology all the time. Uh, are in turmoil because chaos be chaos, and they're just ripping up stuff the whole way. It is, it's terrible for people. So you are chosen by the gods to uh, be soul bound with a, a group of people. We all together. You're basically tasked with missions. So to like put it to something else, it'd be like um, a shadow run. Your little groups all bound by your your souls and a god a god is your fixer to send you off on jobs and they could be as easy as um they range from anything really i mean your overarching thing could be clearing out uh cornites from a freaking in, entire realm but uh just to pump brakes and to bring it back then character creation what can you be in this game well, the species you can be are humans, which is kind of an a duh. It's a little bit of an obvious thing. Uh, you can be humans, Stormcast Eternals, uh, Duradin, Dwarves, Alf, not uh, not the one that eats cats, uh, not to be confused with that, uh, A-E-L-F, which is just a, their fancy version of to spell elves because we have to make everything a little little bit <laughs> a little bit different um and you can also be something i'm blanking on their name right now uh the sylvan f duh and for for the sake of it they're basic they're tree people they're there's they're tree spirits more or less uh and i like how this game works basically how character creation is is you choose your species and then you kind of choose your job and so it works a little bit like what I remember the old Warhammer Fantasy role-playing game worked is you basically just picked a job and your job gave you a certain set of skills and abilities and then you could just stack more skills on it. So you, you're building more of a well-rounded character than like a straight class. You're not really playing like a rogue. You can build something that's very similar to what a rogue is, but it doesn't have to be. You, you build into archetypes. The archetypes have certain different requirements and stuff, like um, a fire slayer is specifically only a Duradin thing. Only Duradins can be fire slayers. Um, only uh, Stormcast Eternals can be the Stormcast Knights. That's that's it. So there's certain things that are locked to your species, but then there's some uh, there's some other things that are a little bit more free flowing, and anyone can really do it. Uh, so 
move into something different that I thought was very neat is uh, this works on a, a difficulty number type roll. It's actually a D6 pools is what you're doing. And the numbering is very simple. It's you're given two numbers by your game master, which is um, they said the DNX colon Y is how they'll say it in the book. Uh, so if it's like a, a mind five colon one, basically you need to roll a five on a D six to make a success. And the second number is the number of successes that you need. So something difficult could be, you know, you need uh, fours to succeed four or ups to succeed and you need three of them like that you know and on your pool of you know four dice that that could be kind of difficult and then it can slip to the other side of like oh it's a you know it's just only someone with it doesn't take a high amount of to make a success but you need a bunch of them so i kind of like it that uh you kind of look at difficulty rolls a little bit differently it's not just a straight like oh your dc is 15 you know no it's like you need maybe a two but you need a bunch of them so there's there's some ways to assist and stuff in this game as well um combat in a mo combat works uh, really simplistically there's really no uh there there's no like arm there's armor but it doesn't work like armor class again i'm going to use dungeons and dragons as a reference because it's just the easiest way to do this so basically what it is is that you have an armor value let's say it's like five and um i have a to hit amount of six i have a higher value that or i have a higher to hit than your armor or your dodging capabilities so i get to roll uh my difficulty to hit you is lower basically but if it's the opposite and your armor is higher than my hit my my the number i need to roll is basically higher it works a lot like for anyone that plays 40k or um war cry and whatnot if the the strength is higher than the the armor it's it's a you know it's a two up if it's if it's a if your strength is lower than the armor then it's you know a five up and if it's if it's doubled or more it's even higher but it's kind of a lot different it's more for I feel like it'll make the combat move a little bit faster when you can just quickly put out small numbers because sometimes it gets a little out of out of whack when you start getting higher and higher and you're getting into ACs of like the 20s and stuff like ridiculous numbers when really you look at the armor and you go I have a body of four and my armor gives me one so I have a total of four just it's very smaller numbers sometimes is nicer I mean having big numbers doing big damage is fun but sometimes rolling it back and hitting with simpler shorter numbers just makes stuff move a little quicker in my opinion uh speaking of movement movement had movement really had me uh very intrigued with my look uh so basically any map is broken into sections so um let, let's take uh let's take a house uh so you're, they're broken into zones so your living room and your dining room and your kitchen are just you know stacked on top of each other just on the map it goes you go from your living room into your dining room into your kitchen those three things will be three different zones now if two people are in the same zone they can attack each other you don't have to move up to you know five feet from each other and be in separate and be in you know touching squares if you're as long as you're in the same zone as long as we're both in the kitchen we can punch each other you also when you move and even to attack you can move your speed depending on how fast you move it like sprinting running walking depends on how many zones you can move through so if you have like a you know if you can move through two zones you can go from the living room into the kitchen and punch somebody and the same thing works with ranged weapons as well if something has like a range of this they can be as long as you have line of sight you can see them from there you can shoot it so i think it's going to pull a little bit which i think is a little bit odd for a game that's it's it's initial inspiration is a very tactical very minute specific down to the like millimeter of movements of miniatures on a board the movement in the rpg is very simplified and gives more to i think more role-playing type of situations where you don't have to worry as much as where you are so you don't really need a map 
if your players know where you are you can really kind of just toss out a, a loosely drawn map on like a piece of leaf of paper and really just let them pl if they wanted to use tokens and you wanted to do that you can just place them just kind of in the zone so you they can at least see what zones connect to what and that's it you don't have to put the big battle map out and draw it all out though if you want to and you want to put out the terrain because games workshop does have a huge line of terrains that you could put out and it'd be awesome but you don't have to and i think it's kind of nice after playing so much fifth edition to not be you know tied to the map i got i used the map a ton in pathfinder and now i basically can't run I could I couldn't run a D and D style game that uses like five feet and in, in feet and ranges and keep in my head where all of my monsters are and all of my players. But if I only have like four zones, that and everyone can at least remember where their zone are because I I'm gonna trust my players that they're not gonna cheat. Then it's it's very nice. So. Oh gosh, what's some other things? I'm just so excited for this game. They've already announced um, a players uh, or a starting a start box kind of thing where it'll have probably a initial adventure and um, like pre-gened characters and whatnot. Um, they'll have things like uh, they've already talked about actual full campaigns, which I love. I love that more games are putting out campaigns because sometimes it helps us GMs think of like, okay, how do you properly balance this? And sometimes we don't want to write the story. So there's already there's already a slate of stuff coming out. They've even put out some free initial campaigns, which are very cool. Uh, other really neat things, because you guys are, because all of you are soul bound together, you're, you're a unit. You have something called soul points that you can use. And I'm not delved very deep in this. This is a very initial look. You can... Uh, spin those points to like revive someone uh, from from like near death or uh, or other certain things now granted there's also a an overarching like how the world is doing so remind me a little bit of like a like a the call like the Arkham Horror's Doom track I think it's even called something the Doom something uh, that the the more screwed up and messed up things like if your party doesn't agree to do something that's like a major thing or if uh someone dies basically the greater world gets more dark and fearful because even the god's champions can't stop what's going on so who could um but after every mission it's very mission based game you're you're sent off on your little task and then you can come back and then you get downtime and your downtime can range from everything from forging weapons, brewing beer, um, for Stormcast Eternals, because technically you're part of Sigmar's armies. You uh, you go back to your storm host, but you don't have to. All you know, you're supposed to report back, but you can also still have a little downtime thing. So there's about a they say about a week of downtime. So you can really get a lot of role playing and stuff into this. You can really actually build your character out to more than just a generic you know loot monster and that's it all it goes out an adventure take things and come back i feel like there's gonna be a lot more room to like build a character as a character um go into more backgrounds and stuff like that um uh, oh gosh i don't i just want to keep gushing about this game i'm just very excited to run it um it just seems so neat they've done an amazing job the art in this is um, is beautiful I just, I can't get over it. I was so excited when I finally got it in the mail. Um, yeah, I think that's really, that's really all I can really think of is that what there is. Um, oh, I guess one other cool thing, because Stormcast Eternals are eternal, they're immortal. When they die, you technically get reforged and resurrected. So <laughs> if you play a Stormcast character, uh, you can't die, which is always very neat. So yeah, if you, if you like fantasy and this is some high fantasy because of course there's magic there's there's pets and mounts like dragons and stuff all this cool crap if you like fantasy you want something a little bit different um cubicle 7 is even working on a 40k they have a 40k version of a role-playing game they've done they do great work i mean they actually make the they make the cards for um no they didn't no i'm thinking i'm, I'm mixing up never mind strike that won't even say it i'm mixing up things uh if you're just looking for something a little bit different um, maybe you want to play a giant tree you literally want to make Groot they can say more than their name though um, check this game out it's 
very cool gorgeous looking setting um i don't know what else i can really say uh if you like this you know just pound the like button uh share it with people um ring the bell uh we're we're back for 2021 we're gonna try and be back for a better 2021 uh we really fell off with not doing stuff so yeah again this was kind of a first initial gush about soulbound you know i could go read a little bit deeper and i could you know go over some more stuff with this this was just kind of initials like oh my gosh like go check this out you know look at it but i've been rambling for 15 minutes here so i'm not gonna keep you any longer so go out uh enjoy games stay safe support your local game stores and we'll, well, we'll, we, I'm, I'm by myself. I'll see y'all next time.